Hello, welcome to the Rose Opal Knits channel. My name is Erica and today I'm going to show you how I make my needle minders. Now if you don't know what a needle minder is, it is a magnet piece that you use to hold your needle to your project. So there are a couple ways that you can use your needle minder. For instance, on this scroll frame, it has a metal screw. So you can just place the needle minder directly, directly onto that metal screw. If you are using a Q-snap or a hoop without metal or just stitching in hand, then you would need two pieces like this needle minder. So you have a second magnet back here and then the one that is attached here. And as you can see, that magnet is so strong that it stays attached even when I pull it away. So first let's discuss the magnets. I purchased neodymium rare earth magnets the small size from Amazon. They came in this metal box like this and they are very strong. They want to stay attached to each other and to the metal box but you can get them apart. Let me set this down. So you just I'm going to slide it apart, then I just add a few to the box because I know I'm going to be using them to make my needle minder. Oop, those went together. Yeah, you can't add too many because then they'll start moving towards each other. And you definitely don't want to keep them out for small children or maybe even your pets to get into. So we'll put those down. Whew. I also use E6000 to attach the magnets to the pieces that are going to become the needle minders. So I have a couple that I made here. This was a button. I made this several months ago. So there's the back magnet. And then this is, you know, actually the piece you would consider the needle minder. This is also a button. It looked like this. You know, it had one of these things. I'm not sure what that's called. On the back, and I just used my craft store wire cutters. And snipped it off. So that's going to become a needle minder today, a button. But I have several things here that I just had around the house that I was no longer using in the way it was intended to be used and I've set them aside and I'm now going to turn them into needle minders. This right here was a piece from a stretchy bracelet, a, Leo a Leah Sophia bracelet that I'd had for years and I don't think I ever wore it. So I just cut the elastic that was holding the beads and the pieces together. And it had these four, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> and I just snipped them off with my craft wire cutters. And that's a, it's smooth. I'm not worried about that um, snagging on my fabric. So that's going to become one today. Here, I have two bracelets that my mother-in-law gave me many years ago. And as you can see, the bracelet part had started to change colors. But the charm itself 
still looks nice. So I took the top off of this one before I started filming, but I'm going to show you. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. So you just take your craft grade wire cutter and you just give it a snip. Discard that there. And if you have any extra little pieces that you're worried about snagging, sorry about that, it's not focusing. You just go over it with the wire cutter. and make it as smooth as you can. All right. Here is a pair of earrings I had that I was no longer wearing. And actually, this hook on the earring had become loose on this one. So I just popped it out. Of course, this one's not going to be that easy. <laughs> and it's not, so I will just give it a snip. This was an enamel pin, like this one. It had the back to it, the that you would attach it with and I just used my wire cutters and snipped it right at that spot and I did it as soon as I knew that I was just going to use this to make a needle minder that's why I didn't have it to show you and then this was a necklace charm that a friend brought home for me on her summer trip to Italy back when I was like 15 years old, so 30 years ago. And the um, part that made it a charm, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> um, came off and I've just kept it in my jewelry box. So it is also going to become a needle minder. So it's very easy to do. You just open your glue and it could probably be easier if I had one of those little narrow, you know, tops to make it more accurate to squeeze, but this works. This is how I've done it. I've never had one of those. So I just add a little bit to the back. And it will leave strings, um, but don't worry about that. You can always remove those after it dries. So I just grab my magnet and I press it in. Then I put it there. And I have these baby wipes here because I find that they come in handy. If I get a little bit of glue on my finger while I'm working, and I just wipe it off. Next one. Just add a little drop. Grab a signal, signal, single magnet. Press it in. And you see there's a little bit of like bulging glue. You don't have to worry about that. It's never caused a problem for me in the past. But if it does bother you, just have a Q-tip handy and kind of go around it with your Q-tip to remove any excess. There, perfect. So 
So now this piece, this earring, it has holes, but that's really not a problem. You're just going to do it the same way. Oh, sorry, I was out of the frame. Put a little bit of your glue there. Attach your magnet, give it a press. Pick up a Q-tip, swipe at any extra glue that might have gotten away from you, and see when you turn it over, you can barely even see that glue there. And you just repeat the process until you have all your needle minders made. A little squeeze of glue, a magnet, a quick press, Q-tip cleanup if you should want to, And lay it down. Don't get them too close so they'll fly at each other. You don't need a ton. Just a little bit goes a long way. I've got this tray with these index cards to protect the surface of the tray. And I'm going to start transferring some of these to the tray. Oh, I got a needle. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish up the last three quickly. Last one. See what happened there when I went to move it? They came together. That should be fine. I'm going to leave it like that and let it dry. So what I'm going to do with this tray is take it out to my garage where it's not going to be disturbed, but it's also not going to be in our home. 
and I'm going to leave it there for 24 hours and after 24 hours they will be set and they will be ready to be used and I will just give them another magnet I will put them on this card and I will store them until I'm ready to use them or until I'm ready to share with a friend Thanks for watching my how-to video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Make sure you close your glue up. <laughs> I've had that for a long time. It lasts. All right, that's it. Thank you.